Hello everybody, welcome to the third episode. This time we are going to talk about constraints. We'll talk about how to validate properties, how to customize getters and setters, how to customize the parent-child relationship in the model, and we'll also talk about customizing presentation of nodes. Let's first look at the robot example. The main purpose of constraints is to further restrict the structure of your ASD, while in the structure you define all the concepts that can be used in your models in constraints. You specify certain restrictions on once, when nodes can be used, or what values properties can have, and, and things like that. For example, if we look at the require command. Require command is, well, this one, where you basically import a library, a library of routines in the robot language. You import them into the script so they could be called. So the concept require, the require command, has constraints. First, it restricts the parent-child relationship. It indicates that a require command can only be a child of a parent node that is a command list. And also, the parent of the command list must be a script. So if I try to insert require inside an if statement, the code completion dialog doesn't give me that option. I can't put require in here. And also, copy paste. If I copy comma, require common here, paste it here, it gets underlined, telling me that I cannot be a child here. So on top of the can be child restriction, I could also specify can be parent or can be ancestor, meaning the parent of a parent of a parent of a certain node. So this way you can restrict the shape of your AST. If you sometimes struggle to understand what the, what the parameters are, you can always open the inspection window and when you point at the header of the concept function that you are filling in, you see a nice description of all the of all the parameters that you get in, in the function. Okay, while we are at it, a few tips on how to write code in these um, concept functions. Now clearly here we are navigating around the AST. So we're looking around the model trying to figure out the parent and check what type or kinds of or instance of the, the particular node is. Um, this is all covered by the S model. It should be imported by default in constraints. Well, if it isn't, you can always import a language, S model or this one, so that then you can write the code that checks for parents and ch children and ascendants and descendants. Uh, you could also consider checking out the documentation, the user guide, covers uh, the S model language in quite a good detail. So just a few tips. So when you get hold of a node, like here we've got a node, you can always hit Control shift or Command shift t to see the, the type of the node. So now we see node is of concept require. And now with a, with a dot, now we can navigate around. So node is a require command. We can always see the, the properties and children and references that are declared in the concept, like library, for example. You know, in the require command, we've got a reference called library, and so we could and so we could refer to it from here. Uh, you could navigate to the parent. And then with colon you can cast it to another concept. So let's assume the parent is a script, which it isn't in our case, but you know, so this 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 way you could make it a script. So if you now create a variable, it will be of type node script. Now you can check for 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 null, is null, is not null. So you can check whether node is null or not. You can check whether it's a particular instance or a particular concept. And now you type the concept that you're looking for. So it's instance of. 
or you can search for ancestors either one ancestor or all ancestors so let's say we're looking for an ancestor of script so this will give us back the surrounding script the, f the script it finds climbing up the AST from starting from the node you might also search for all ancestors so now this will give you back a list of all ancestors in the tree up to the root and or you might just filter it you might filter it by concept so add parameters and uh, let's say we're looking only for command command list so all commands l command lists on the way up to the root of the tree and optionally we might include plus meaning include the current one if it is also a command list now we get a list of command lists if you open the code completion dialog on a node you'll see many options there for checking the AST or for modifying the AST we'll cover some of those in the next episode when we talk about behavior or you might check the documentation to understand them all to show how constraints work for the properties I'll switch to a different command let's use the step command step is a command for the robot to make a step ahead how about enhancing this command so that it accepts a number of steps the robot should make so in step I add a new property number of steps should be an integer value I also enhance the editor although now I'm getting ahead of myself so that we need to add numbers to the editor so that it is visible on the screen and you could edit it now the step shows an extra value extra field to specify the number of steps a robot should make however I would like to avoid invalid values 0, minus 1 you know these should be treated as invalid I would like 10 to be a valid value but minus 1, 0 should be invalid so it's time to add a constraint on the property value so for the property number of steps we define a validator that will only accept property only property values bigger than 0 and now after a compilation we should get errors for all the invalid values so these are now all reported as invalid out of range you could also customize the getter and setter for the for the property well another part of the constraints definition that I would like to, you to look at is is the reference constraints and here you s restrict references that go out of uh, of a node um, like in our case the require command the require command refers to a library just to refresh your memory this is a require command inside a script it points to a library and includes all the definitions in that library so that they are available in the script now the require command however doesn't offer all all the libraries out there for example if I do require and control space I only see a filling library while if I delete require come on if I delete this one now I see common and filling in there so the list is being filtered well all the already imported libraries are no longer listed in the completion box so now if I add filling require completion is empty there's no other library I could import so clearly the content of the completion dialog is being filtered it's being filtered by the libraries that are uh, already imported and this is the this is what we do here in the reference constraints so here we constrain oh, so sort of start from scratch so we constrained a, a link a library which is this one so we restrict where it can point to because by default it can point everywhere so if I leave it if I leave it unrestricted then I see all the three libraries listed in here so I need to add a restriction 
and the restriction is called scope. Scope is pretty much a set of objects that a reference can point to and you've got two options. You can either pick inherited or reference scope while inherited uses while inherited uses a hierarchical approach, which is which is sort of more declarative, uh, the reference scope allows you to write a piece of code that will return all the possible target objects that you want to link to. And that is what was used here before. So if we get back to what the code was before, we see that that was some sort of S model, um, S model code that look at the current model, took its root concepts of the library, or all the root nodes of the library concept and then we check that it isn't already imported into the current script. So this is how we get the um, the current, the, the script around the current place where we are. You know, enclosing node is the node around the cursor, where the cursor is. Now we search for the script around it, so now we find the script. And now from that script we look for all the require commands that are there those that are different from the current one. So now we take all the other required commands and we get the libraries they point to and we make sure that they are all different from the from the current library, from the library that we would like to include in the completion dialog. And if this is true, then it will be included. And this is where we build the scope. We create a new list scope. There are several, uh, several types of scopes that you can pick from or you can implement one of your own. So if you go to list scope you realize it's in some sort of package together with other together with other scopes that you might use. You could also specify the presentation of, of a link. So how the reference should look like in the code completion dialog. So when you pop up this when you pop up this dialog, so what exactly will be shown here can be customized in here. So you you're supposed to return you're supposed to return a string that you build out of all these parameters. Again, you can hi you, you can see all the parameters down here in the inspector. So for example, we could take the parameter node which is the library that is to be appeared is to be shown in the completion dialog. We pick its name and we might append some text and compile and see how the completion dialog changed. So the two remaining options here are the reference send handler which gives you an option to define uh, to define a callback that, it's, that gets notified whenever a reference changes from an old reference node to a new reference node. Well the, the second one is then the default scope. Well, the default scope part here allows you to define uh, a default scope for uh, for a potential target of a reference. So in our case, it would mean we would have to go to the library, to its constraints, and uh, in the default scope, we would specify um, the scope that would use by default for all, refer all the references pointing to a library that do not define their own reference constraints. Okay, well that's it about constraints. Uh, thank you for watching. In the next episode we'll look into the behavior aspect. Goodbye.